All right, well, good morning or good afternoon. I'm here with period six. Hello, period six. Okay, we're doing part two of the review questions. So this will start at question number 24. Hopefully we'll make it all the way through. These tended to be some of the problems a lot of students were most, having most difficulty with. So it's good we're getting this out of the way. So let's see. The half-life of a radioactive material. Okay, I'm just going to put the beginning and the end on each of these problems. The half-life is 12 days. So we know that. I'm just going to put an arrow there like that. And let's see here. Total time. How many days will it take? So that's what we're trying to find in this problem is going to be total time. Does it take for three quarters of the original amount to decay? Well, here's four quarters of it right there if we want to think of it that way. So after 12 days, we're going to have half or two quarters of it remaining. And so it's going to take another 12 day, and this was what, 12 days was it? Another 12 day, half of this will break down, leaving only one quarter of the original. And I think at this point, have I answered the question here for three quarters of the original? Oh, that was one extra too many. So there's only um, three quarters has decayed, so that's going to take a total of 24 days. The next one, number 25. We've got a beginning and an end over here somewhere after 32 days. So they're giving us the total time. I'm going to get that put in there, 32 days. 20 milligrams of iodine. So we know we started with 20 milligrams of iodine-131, 100%. Has decayed to 5 milligrams. OK, we know we've got 5 milligrams over here. And we need to find what's the half-life. How many arrows is it going to take to do this? So let's see, after the first half-life, we should have only half of the material left. That's why they call it half-life. You should have 10 milligrams left. And then, oh, looks like it only takes one more half-life to end up over there. So we'd end up with one quarter of the original that we started with, 20 to 10 to 5. And the question was, what is the half-life? So let's see, this is 32 days. So that means each of these arrows would have to be 16 and 16 would add up to 32. So 16 days is the half-life. Because these, all these arrows have to add up to the total there. Or you could do 32 divided by two arrows and it gives you the half-life. Number 26, we've got barium. Okay, let me set these up. I'm just gonna get these pre-set up if you do that. Total time. It tells us the half-life is 120 seconds. How much of a 100 gram sample? So we got 100 grams right there of barium. How much will remain after 120 seconds? Okay, so the total time is 120 seconds. And since that's what a half-life is, we're done. It only takes one half-life. And see, how much will remain? Well, half of 100 will be 50 grams of barium will remain. So that's our answer. 50 grams remain. Number 27, what's the notation of copper with the atomic number 29? Well, when you do these, you need to look on your periodic table, find out that copper's symbol is Cu. It tells you the atomic number always goes in the bottom front when we're doing isotope notation, and the mass number goes up there on the top. That's a little bit different from periodic table notation, which usually they put the atomic number on the top, and then you'll probably have something like 64.82 because periodic table numbers are averages and we went over that previously in part one. Number 28, what does the nucleus of iron 55 contain? Well, let's see. The nucleus has protons and neutrons in it. Since it's iron 55, we know the total number is 55. So you have to look on a periodic table and iron is Fe, it's atomic number 26. That's how many protons it has. So there will be 26 protons. And hey, period, can you help me out out there if you're following? What's 55 minus 26? Anybody have that answer for us out there? Well, you know what, you can figure it out if you don't have it. So it's, that's what's in the nucleus of iron 55. Now, if you just, in the, if you didn't read the problem right and you just said, figured out how much was an iron. If you went to the periodic table, 
chances are iron here is 56 no, uh, and this is iron 55 so you got to make sure if they give you the mass number use it if they don't give you the mass number if they just said what's in the nucleus of Fe or iron then you look on the periodic table and you'd have to round the atomic number to 56 draw diagrams that illustrate the difference between fission okay fission is when this happens boom you pop in half okay there's a simple diagram can't make that one easier and fusion reactions okay I'm just gonna do the opposite boom they get bigger so there's the simplest diagram of that very often though one of these could be an alpha particle they could even be a beta particle in here too when it's fission all right what's the electron configuration for nitrogen nitrogen is atomic number seven oh, I can't see that on that chart I should get a lighter colored one well it's atomic number seven and you can use the if you like you can fill in your seven electrons one two three four five six seven if you're going to use the actual off bow diagram let me get that up there so for the nitrogen it's going to be 1s2 2s2 2p3 1s2 2s2 2p what did i say it was three 2p3 the element sodium when you look up sodium on the periodic table whoa i totally off there there we go so sodium has 11 electrons so I'm just going to continue on from nitrogen here on this one. So I think I stopped at seven electrons, eight, nine, 10, 11. Okay, so now it's going to be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s1. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s1. Okay, and then the next one is going to be the element silicon, and that's has 14 electrons so actually at this point it's just got two more electrons than than uh, sodium did oh excuse me I take that back it's got three more sodium had 11 so there was sodiums where I ended up so there's 11 then 12 13 and 14 so this one's gonna go up to 3p2 so 1s2 2s2 2p6 and 3s2 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, and I think I had 3p2. 3p2. Let me get those filled out. And we will give you the off bow diagram on the test and the slanted diagram as well. And chlorine has 17 electrons. So if you want to use the slanted diagram for chlorine, it would be. Okay, we got to do this one. We're going to have 1s2, then we're going to have 2s2. Then we've got, I got to continue, 2p with 6, and then 3s2. Then we're going to come over here, 3p6. Okay, 6, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Whoops, I went one too far. Back off one. That should be 3p5. There we go. All these scripts add up to 17. So we end up with 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. Let's see, we're at 3s2 and then 3p5. And chlorine is a halogen. It's missing one of those electrons, and that's why the halogens in group 17 are so reactive because they want to get that one electron back. Use the off bow diagram at right. Okay, what element is shown? So if they give you an off bow diagram, let's say we got 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 31. So if I didn't miscount, there's 31 electrons. And 31 on the periodic table is gallium, GA. So what elements have these electron configurations? We got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. That's going to be nitrogen. Okay, here we got two, four, six, eight electrons. So eight electrons. That's going to be oxygen when you look on the atomic on the periodic table. And here we got two, four, six, eight, um, nine electrons. And that's fluorine. Did you all get that? Those of you that are paying attention out there in TV land, did you get nitrogen, oxygen, and 
Okay, I'm getting some nods. Okay. Draw a simple diagram for the S. It's spherical. So you can kind of, there we go. It's going to be ball shaped and round. The P orbitals, two electrons will fit in, the, in this dumbbell shape. And then you can get two electrons in this axis, and then you can get two more electrons up there. So it's a total of, of three overlapping dumbbell-shaped orbitals. Number 34, name the scientific, what's the name of the creation theory for the universe according to science? Yeah, it's the Big Bang Theory. Not the most elegant, glamorous name. It would have been more neat if it was Cosmos Cynthia Grande long time ago, you know. But it's Big Bang, and that's what stuck, so. And about how long ago was that? How many billions of years ago? Yes, yeah, so about 14. Yeah, it's like 13.6, 13.8, depending upon whether you talk to the Americans or the Europeans. So, what are nebula gas clouds? How do they form? Um, gravity pulls dust left over from previous stars, or if it was early in the solar system, it was hydrogen. Pull hydrogen and dust together. So that's how nebulas form. Saw some nice ones in the Cosmos video. What are stars? Balls of hydrogen and helium. How do they form from nebulas? From nebulas that get pulled together even tighter. So what are the types of electromagnetic radiation? You've got this in your starter in your notes. We start off the lowest energy as radio waves. Then I think, whoops, then you get to microwaves. Uh-oh, let's see. Then is this heat next? I think we're getting into heat or infrared. Is the fancy word infrared. Then we get to visible light. Hey, I see you. Okay, visible light. And then we're getting over here into ultraviolet. I'll just abbreviate it UV. This is what can give us sunburns. Then you start getting into x-rays and then gamma rays. And what you need to know is the wavelengths start like this, and then they start to get closer together. And then there's so really sh um, short wavelength, high frequency, long wavelength, low frequency over there. And what do the colors of light, what are the colors from light? Okay, that's Roy G. Biv, those we tend to just to see violet, but anyway, so there's the abbreviation red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. What's the equation for wavelength? From your notes, we said the speed of light, C, is equal to wavelength times the frequency. I'm using the symbols for those. Frequency. And so you just got to divide both sides of the equation by frequency, and then there's your equation which I think you got that one on the quiz. Draw and label low and high frequency light wave. Okay, there's a low frequency like red. There's a high frequency like blue. And let's see, long wavelength and short wavelength. I'm using the Greek letters for wavelength there. Speed of light is 180, no, excuse me, 300,000 kilometers per second. That's not going to be on the final, so don't worry about it. Starlight can tell us three things It can about stars. It can tell us their temperature. It can tell us the composition of the stars. That's from the barcode patterns. And it can tell us direction. And that's from the Doppler shift if those waves are spread apart to the blue end of the spectrum, or if those get squeezed really close together, you get a blue shift. And red shift going away from us, and a blue shift star is coming towards us. And the barcodes and light are just the 
when the electrons are kicked off from these stars, they give off a little photon of light. So it's photons of color when electrons return back to their ground state, when, when electrons return to their ground state. How do stars release energy? Nuclear fusion. And that's hydrogens changing into helium plus a lot of energy. And I should put more hydrogens over here. And where are elements forged? They're forged in the cores of star, core of stars. And part of what we have, you got fusion right here. And when the stars blow up or go nova, then you get um, blowing up stars blowing up makes big elements. And you can just look on your chart. I don't remember the colors. We did this. We're not going to ask you those on the test. And lastly, when an, an electron drops back to its correct orbital, here's orbitals, here's where an electron is supposed to be, and you add heat to it, the electron can be pushed up one or more orbitals momentarily. And when that energy is released, the electron drops back down and it shoots off light, a photon, when it goes back to the ground state. And that's why we, and depending upon how high this electron had to fall back to its ground state, we get different colors. And thank you for your patience. Good luck on your test. Actually, luck favors the well-prepared, so be well-prepared. <laughs>